So if you've ever asked someone, how do I get women to like me? How do I get a girlfriend and so forth? You've most likely heard someone say, just be yourself. Just be yourself. Just be yourself, Sam. Be yourself. Sam said me. Just be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. The thing is, the big problem with that is what they're saying is actually true but the person is failing to pass on some critical information to you that makes all the difference, right? Because being yourself actually does work if you understand the secret that I'm gonna share with you in this video. So let's first have a look at the big problem here with the advice of just be yourself. So sometimes a guy will be going through his life and being himself, and what that means around women that he finds attractive is that he lacks confidence, he doubts himself, he feels unsure, he feels like he doesn't really know how to handle the situation, he doesn't really know if he's worthy of a woman like that, he doesn't know how to be that cool, confident guy that he is when he's around his friends or around women that he's not attracted to. Right? So who he is at that point in his life is a guy who can't feel confident around women that he finds attractive. So if someone tells him, if you want to get laid or get a girlfriend or get women to like you, just be yourself, that's not going to help. It's not working, right? He's being himself and it's not working. Now, some guys go on to think, well, look, it's just not who I am. I'm not the sort of guy who feels confident around women that I find attractive. No, that's not right. He's a guy that hasn't yet figured out how to be confident around women that he finds attractive. Because if you look up confidence in the dictionary, it is belief in yourself and your abilities. So, at this point in his life, he doesn't have belief in his ability to make women that he finds attractive feel attracted to him. He's not confident about that. Now, does that mean that he'll never be confident about that, that he can't fix it, that he can't do anything about it? No. And I'll use myself here as a case in point, right? That I used to be a guy that didn't feel confident around women that I found attractive. If I was talking to a woman that I didn't find attractive, then I could be more of myself, right? I could say the sort of things that I wanted to say. I could react in ways that I wanted to react. It was more of my natural self. But if I was interacting with a woman that I found very attractive, suddenly I felt the pressure to impress. Suddenly I felt like she wouldn't like a guy like me. I'm not good looking enough. There's no way that she's gonna like a guy like me. And I would then begin to worry. I would then begin to try to impress her, to try to be pleasing to her and hopefully she will like me for some reason. I had no idea how to make women that I found attractive feel attracted to me. And when I would interact with women that I found attractive, I couldn't do it and that then reinforced my belief that I couldn't do it, right? So I had no belief in myself and my abilities around attractive women and therefore I didn't have confidence around attractive women, right? I had insecurity, I had self-doubt. But when I figured out how to make women feel attracted to me and I started to do that, I was able to kiss women, have sex with women, have many women in my life at the same time and enjoy my choice of women for over 10 years before I eventually met my perfect girl and I've been with her since then. Now the thing is, who I was prior to then was a guy who didn't feel confident around women that he found attractive, right? That's who I was, I was that sort of guy. And if I continued on just saying, that's all there is to it, you know, that's the end of the show, folks, that's it, right? You can't actually change as a man, you can't actually improve, you can't actually level up your personality. What you're born with is who you are, right? Back then I actually had social anxiety, right? In social situations, if I was talking to people and the attention went on me, I would get extremely nervous and I would fumble over my words at times and so forth. And that's who I was back then, but that's not who I knew I was deep down. I knew that there was more to me. I knew that I could be stronger. So a big mistake that a lot of guys make when it comes to the whole be yourself thing is that they say, well, look, I am who I am and women should just like me for it. And I've heard people say, just be yourself and women will like you. But the thing is, women are looking for certain traits in a man, such as confidence, right? If you can't be confident around a woman that you find attractive to the point where you're not seeking her approval, you're not hoping that she approves of you, you're not trying to suck up to her or anything like that. If you can't get into the mode where you're 
confident in yourself and you believe in yourself regardless of what she is saying or doing, then you will struggle to make the woman feel attracted to you. But that doesn't mean you can't make a woman like that feel attracted to you. If you were confident in front of her, when interacting with her, she would naturally feel attracted to you because attraction is a reaction to the display of attractive traits. So if you display attractive traits, women automatically feel attracted to you. The next one, unable to keep a conversation going and keep it interesting. This is something that I struggled with as well, right? Wherein I would talk to a woman that I found attractive and I would ask her, so what do you do? And where are you from? And what's your name? And blah, blah, blah. And after that, I had nothing to say because I was just trying to say something and hope that something would happen. Right, I'd ask her what she does for a living. She asked me, oh yeah, I work in this office and I'm doing this and that. And then she's going to be impressed that I'm working in an office or she's going to like the shirt that I'm wearing or something is going to happen, but it didn't. And the reason why is that I had no idea that there was a type of humor that would make a woman feel attracted to me. I had no idea how to flirt with women. So for example, if I was talking to a woman who said she worked as an accountant, when I had no idea how to use humor in a way that would make a woman feel attracted, I would just say, oh yeah, cool, yeah, how long have you been doing that? Or did you go to university for that? How long did you go for? Which university did you go to? How do you find working as an accountant? I'm having a nice, logical, friendly conversation with her and that is not making her feel attracted, right? It just feels like she's talking to a nice, friendly guy. There's no sexual spark there. But when I figured out by observing guys who are naturally good with women and by thinking about it that, hang on a second, women feel attracted to confidence. Women feel attracted to guys who aren't afraid to playfully challenge them. Women feel attracted to guys who can playfully mess with them at times. Then I was like, okay, maybe that's something I can try. It wasn't who I was at that point. I was just a nice guy, just nice and intelligent and friendly. And that's all I wanted to be. But then I realized that, okay, these other guys who are getting laid so easily and women are liking so much, they're not just being nice and friendly all the time. They're doing something else. All right, so how about I give it a try? So then when I figured it out, and if I asked a woman that she worked as an accountant, I wouldn't just say, you know, how long you been doing that or where did you go to university and so forth. I would say something like this. Oh, well, that makes sense then. And she would ask why. Well, when I first saw you, I thought, geez, that girl looks like a nerd. And now you've just confirmed it. You know, you're a nerdy accountant girl. Or, right, yeah, I thought you looked nerdy. That makes sense. Or, an accountant, you nerd. Or, an accountant, you're such a nerd. Or, yeah, I thought you looked like a nerd. And the woman would then feel attracted to the fact that I had the balls to say that, the social intelligence to say it, the confidence to say it, and... Best of all, she knew I was joking, right? Prior to that, I would think that if a guy said something like that to a woman, she'd get offended, right? You can't go saying things like that. That's rude. But women are actually attracted to the fact that you have the social confidence and social intelligence and awareness to be able to say something like that and know that women aren't going to get offended by it. Women are going to like it because women actually like it when a guy has the balls, the courage, the masculinity to be in a position where he can playfully mess with a woman, where he's not looking up to her like she is a woman that he needs to worship. You know, whatever you want, I'll just do whatever you want. I'll say whatever you want. I'll be the nicest guy in the world for you if you just give me a chance. Right, women don't want to be getting that sense from a guy, even if the guy's trying to hide it, where he's just being nice when talking to her, but not sucking up to her like a desperate nice guy or anything like that. He's still quite a cool guy, yet all he's really doing is being nice during a conversation with her. It's nice, it's a nice interaction, but at the end of the day, what's going to happen between you and her is a sexual relationship. And in the sexual relationship between a man and a woman, it's not neutral, right? It's not, we're just a couple of friends and okay, let's now play with each other's genitals. Instead, it's she feels like you're the more masculine one. She feels submissive and feminine in comparison to your energy, to your approach. And that doesn't mean 
that you always have to be making her feel like she needs to submit and that you are just super dominant and so forth. Instead, there needs to be some elements of that where she senses, okay, this guy is actually a man that sees her as a woman rather than seeing her as just some equal friend, a co-worker, someone to just get along with. He's actually looking at her and creating a dynamic where there's a sexual energy because there's a clear masculine and a clear feminine. And the thing is, some guys think, well, why should I have to do that when women don't have to do anything? I just like them as they are, but I've got to go and do something. That means I'm going to be fake. But here's the thing. It's a really interesting question to ask yourself. When was the last time you were 100% yourself around an attractive woman and you let her see who you really were, how you really thought? You didn't care about how she may or may not react. You weren't trying to win her approval. You were just being yourself and didn't care if it increased or decreased her interest in you. You let her see the quirks in your personality. You let her see a bit of weirdness if you have it. And you let her see all the cool things or the intelligent things about you. But you just let it flow. And you weren't actually trying to hopefully win her approval. When was the last time you did that around an attractive woman who was single and you actually wanted to have sex with, right? So in most cases, a guy who wants to just be himself will actually put on a bit of an act around a woman of being, for example, nicer than he normally is or wants to be, more polite than he normally is or wants to be. He will try to win the woman's approval. He will be putting on a quote-unquote nice guy act, and therefore he won't actually be himself. So the thing is, unless a guy can be 100% himself around a woman and not care, then he's not being himself. Instead, he's actually presenting himself in a certain way. And the way that you present yourself to a woman is either going to make her feel attracted to you, feel neutral towards you, or feel turned off by you. And the thing is, using playfully challenging humor is one of the easiest ways for a guy to go from where he is right now to being attractive to women, to creating sexual sparks inside of the woman because she feels attracted to the fact that he has the balls and the social intelligence, the courage, and so on to be able to say something like that. It wakes her up. It also shows to her that he is not trying to say all the right things, all the nice things to hopefully be approved by her and get a chance with her. He has the confidence to be able to say something that will potentially push her away, but it won't actually push her away. And she will know that he's joking because it's playfully challenging humor, right? It's not insults or mean, rude comments and so forth. It's playfully challenging humor. So the thing is, some guys think to themselves, well, look, I just don't like any of that small talk stuff. I don't want to have to say some sort of joke to a woman. You know, I'm a serious guy. I'm intelligent. And I talk in a straightforward manner. I don't like to muck around with all these silly games and so forth. I'm a serious guy, right? And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with being a serious guy, right? I'm quite a serious guy myself. But at the end of the day, When you're interacting with a woman, you're not interacting with a man or a person that you're going to work with or something like that. You're interacting with a woman that you're going to have sex with and she wants to feel a certain way in order to feel sexually aroused by you. Women don't feel sexually aroused by logical, straightforward communication from a man. Hey, let's talk like a couple of men. So where did you go to university and what did you think of the university? And, uh, you know, how did your studies go? And, uh, you know, it's quite interesting. It reminds me of when I was studying and blah, 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 blah. He just wants to have a freaking chat like he's talking to a guy or he's talking to someone that he's going to work with or someone that he's trying to gain the respect of or someone that's a peer or something like that. But when you're talking to women, it's different. You've got to be able to switch into a mode where you're flirting with her or you're using some humor that makes her feel playfully challenged, or you're using an approach that makes her feel aroused sexually. Otherwise, she doesn't actually need to have anything happen between you and her because she can have a nice conversation with anyone. She can have a nice conversation with a coworker, with a friend, with her cousin, who's a guy. Just have a nice neutral conversation, but if you want to have a sexual relationship with her, you need to be able to talk to her in a way that creates a sexual dynamic between you and her. 
And the thing is, I remember when I had no idea how to attract women, I was living with my older sister at the time. We were renting a place together. And I came home after some after work drinks and I told her that, you know, I've been trying to talk to women and it just doesn't go anywhere. I start off the conversations and then it just, you know, goes flat. I run out of things to say. I don't know what to say. It just seems boring. And what did my sister say? Nothing that helped me. Right? She said, oh, maybe you're just not meeting the right girls. And she was wrong. It wasn't me not meeting the right girls. It was me not knowing how to make women feel sexually attracted to me during a conversation to create a sexual dynamic between me and the woman. I was saying, what do you do? How long have you been doing it? What do you think of your job? Do you like it? And blah, blah, blah. I was just having a nice, friendly conversation with her. I had no idea how to flirt with women. As a result, I struggled to keep conversations going and keep them interesting with women because women just didn't feel the need to continue talking to me because what's the point? Why is she just standing there having a nice, neutral, friendly conversation with a guy? What's the point? Right? What is this? Just have a chat about what you do for a living? Okay. That's not what she's there for. She's trying to meet a lover, boyfriend, or husband. So you've got to let her look at you in that way, rather than just coming across in a way where you're trying to be her friend, trying to just be a nice friend, a peer, right? Let's just have a chat. No. If you want her sexually and you want her to want you sexually, create that dynamic. So what amazed me when I figured out how to do it is that in the past, conversations would just go flat. And, you know, I'd run out of things to say. The woman would say, okay, nice talking to you. I'm going to talk to my friends. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Or she would just turn away and walk away, right? In the past, I was experiencing that. And then when I figured out how to make women feel attracted to me during a conversation, they were trying to keep the conversation going with me. They were hitting on me. They were showing loads of interest in me. They were initiating touch with me at times. I was in the position now where it's like, okay, she wants me. And all I've got to do is continue being attractive because I know how to do it now and connect with her and move things forward, which I did over 250 times. And for some guys, that's hard to wrap their mind around, but that's what happened over the course of 10 years before I settled down. And when you know how to do it, it's extremely easy. You just start talking to the woman. She feels attracted to you. She wants you. You keep it going. You move it forward and it works. But if a guy doesn't know how to talk to women in a way that makes them feel attracted, then it's going to be difficult for him because women are going to feel like, what's the point, right? If she's interacting with a guy and there's no sexual spark there, or there's only a little bit, then she thinks, well, there isn't enough of a sexual spark to maintain a boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, wife relationship. So he's not the one for her. Yet if she's feeling sexually attracted and aroused and is enjoying talking to him, she then feels like they have sexual and emotional chemistry. He becomes a real option for her whether she's going to have sex that night or she's going to say yes to giving her phone number and then go on a date with him and have sex on the first or second date. And then they become boyfriend and girlfriend and potentially go on to become husband and wife if both of them want to do that. But it's the easy way to just get to the point, right? It's sexual attraction first and then everything else after that, All right? What a lot of guys try to do is I'm going to try to get this girl to like me as a person and then hopefully something happens. But she comes across guys who are doing that all the time. They're just trying to be a likable person. Almost every guy that she meets doesn't have the ability or the balls to make her feel sexually attracted and aroused in a subtle way when he's interacting with her. And the reason I say subtle way is that I know that some guys are afraid of coming on too strong, being too forward, looking sleazy or something like that. But it's not about that. As you would have noticed when you've seen guys who are naturally good with women interacting with women, it's very subtle, right? The way that the guy is talking to her, the way that he's looking at her, the way that she starts looking back at him and then giggling and flirting with him, there's a secret understanding between the two of them, right? It's not the guy being overtly sexual towards her and trying to, you know, make moves on her and all that sort of stuff right away. Although a guy can do that, and it does work if you have a really high level of skill and confidence at attracting women. But for 95% of situations, it's just a case of creating that subtle sexual dynamic between you and her 
where it's not just about talking as friends. And when a woman feels that, she then feels motivated to keep the conversation going because she's feeling turned on. She's feeling attracted to you. She wants something to happen, right? So the guys who have actually learned my playfully challenging humor examples from the flow and have actually used it when they're interacting with women, they know that it works and they've gotten results and they're enjoying it. And you'll see success story comments from them under various videos across this channel. But for a guy who's never done it before, who's never talked to a woman like that before, he will often think, well, it's just not me. I don't wanna be using humor to attract her and so forth, she should like me just for me. I don't wanna be like a funny guy. And the thing is, thankfully for guys like that, using humor is not the only way to attract women. Right, in the flow, for example, I teach eight personality traits that naturally attract women. And three of those, for example, are confidence, masculinity, and charm. Right, So if a guy is interacting with a woman and he's being confident and he's displaying some emotional masculinity and he's being charming towards her, that can be enough for many of the women that he meets. Right? He doesn't actually have to use playfully challenging humor as well. But there are going to be times when he comes across a woman who needs to sense that he has some balls and where she wants to feel a bit more excitement in the interaction. And if he doesn't have the ability to just add a bit of that in, then in many cases, he'll lose his opportunity with her right? because she's the sort of woman who just wants a little bit more than confidence, masculinity and charm. Right? She wants to be able to have a good laugh and feel a bit playfully challenged around the guy because that turns women on. Right? She wants to be able to feel turned on in that way. And for me personally, back when I used to struggle to attract women, I didn't know how to use humor in a way that made them feel attracted. And when I figured out how to do it, and I did it, they felt attracted. But that doesn't mean that I've continued on using that in all my interactions with people now. And I do it all the time now. I naturally throw it in here and there into interactions if I feel like it. But because I've settled down and I'm in a committed relationship now, I'm not trying to flirt with other women and make them feel attracted to me. I rarely add it into interactions with women that I have because I don't want to make them feel attracted to me. I just want to have a platonic, neutral interaction with them. But sometimes I just add it in for the fun of it, right? But I'm not trying to pick up the woman. But the thing is, if I was single and I was meeting women with the intention of wanting to have sex with them, I would definitely be using it because this is a bit of a weird way to explain it, but it's sort of like when women go out to meet men and they have their cleavage on display. Right? We know that that makes us feel attracted. We look at it and we think, whoa, look at those. Right? It gets our attention, it makes us feel attracted and so forth. But that doesn't mean the woman now always has to show her cleavage in order to make you feel attracted. And it's the same thing when you attract a woman initially when you're using your male cleavage, which is the ability to use humor and make her feel playfully challenged, make her laugh and feel girly in comparison to the approach that you're using. Right? So you're using a type of humor that makes her feel girly and you seem like the more masculine one, you're creating that dynamic between you and her. It's very sexy for the woman, it's very arousing for her. Just because you did that initially, it doesn't mean that you have to now do that forever in a relationship, right? You just have to every day think of something playfully challenging to say to your woman. You don't need to do that. Instead, you add it in here and there whenever you feel like it, if necessary, but the woman doesn't need that from you anymore. Just like when you're in a relationship, you don't need your woman to constantly have her cleavage on display. You know that she has boobs and you know that you can get them out when you're having sex, great. And she knows that you have the social intelligence and the ability to use that type of humor and she feels attracted to that, great. But she doesn't need you to do it all the time. So the thing is, as I said, if you ask people what you should do to get laid or get a girlfriend or get women to like you, they'll say, just be yourself. But a big misconception, a big misunderstanding, and a failure to pass on critical information in a situation like that is that a guy often walks away thinking that being yourself means not improving. Right? Just be whoever you are, and that's it, and women should like you for it. But that's just not the way that it works. The secret of the whole being yourself thing is that it only works if you're being a version of yourself that is sexually attractive to women. So what they are actually saying is that they are able to be themselves and what they're displaying is making women feel sexually attracted to them, making women have romantic feelings for them. So the guy will be 
confident, he'll be charismatic, or he'll be funny, or he'll be charming, or he'll have emotional masculinity, he'll be able to flirt with women, he'll be able to do some of those things, all of those things, or even just one of those things, and he'll be getting results because he's interacting with women in a way that makes them feel sexually attracted and have romantic feelings rather than just feeling neutral towards him or worse, feeling turned off. For example, women feel attracted to confidence rather than insecurity. So if a guy isn't confident around them, then he's going to struggle to make women feel attracted to him. They might think, okay, he's kind of cool. He is this, he's that or whatever but he isn't confident enough for a woman like her. Now, another woman who's not attractive will usually like that, right? She'll think, oh, he's cool, he seems intelligent, and he's insecure, he's shy, he doubts himself. Then she likes him because that guy doesn't know his own value. That's a guy who will struggle to attract other women, so she should be able to keep him in a relationship. She likes that if she's unattractive, but if you want a woman who's attractive, who's pretty, and so forth, the sort of woman that you will continue to feel attracted to, that you'll continue to feel proud of, then you actually need to be a guy that she can continue feeling attracted to. And that doesn't mean working out in the gym, having six pack abs, being ripped, being super successful in life and so forth, because the reality is that most people do not become hugely successful financially. Most people have an average shaped body and that isn't the thing that keeps a woman with a guy for life. What keeps a woman with a guy for life is his ability to make her feel respect, attraction, and love for him. And when you know how to be attractive to women, then you just do that automatically, right? It's a default behavior. It's a default response. It's a default way of being, right? The thing is, my default way of being in the past was to be insecure, to feel unworthy of women that I found attractive. That was my default, but I changed that. And my default now, as it has been for over 20 years, is that, of course, I'm attractive to women. Right? And it's not about my physical appearance. Obviously, I don't look like a male model. Right? It's not about that. It's about the fact that I display the fundamental traits that are attractive to women. And that is who I am now. Yet, at that point in my life, I could have said, no, who I am is an insecure guy, is a guy who is unworthy of women that he finds attractive, is a guy that doesn't know what to say to women. That's who I am. And why should I have to do anything other than that? Right, women should just like me because I'm intelligent. I've got good intentions. I'm a good guy. That's why they should like me. Well, the thing is, women will like a guy because of that. Right, they'll think, oh, he's a good guy but they won't feel sexually attracted to him because of it. Women need to experience the display of other traits to feel sexually attracted, right? If women could just feel sexually attracted to being nice and having a friendly conversation with her and showing how intelligent you are and so forth, then it would be so easy. You know, you just go into a bar or go into a party and just say, hey, how about that universe, eh? And get into a huge existential conversation with her. Talk about the complexities of quantum physics and mathematics, engineering, and so forth. You get into huge, complex, intellectual, logical conversations with her, and she would just get wet, right? She would get her boobs out for you, right? She would just jump on you because you're so intelligent, right? He's so smart, and he's nice. We're getting along. That's it. She wants to have sex with him. No, that's not the way that it works. Now, that doesn't mean that a guy should be dumb to make women want him. The way to do it is to be yourself but be dumb. No, that's not it. Like, you be yourself, and if that means that you're an intelligent guy, you are intelligent, but what you need to display to the woman are traits that are going to make her feel attracted, right? So, what actually happens is that when you make a woman feel sexually attracted to you and you have sex with her, after that... She then becomes interested in talking about all the things that you want to talk about. You know, I remember having many conversations in bed, naked with beautiful women, and just talking about the universe, talking about existence, talking about all sorts of things. And they loved it. Right? They were listening. We'd have huge conversations with about it and then have sex again and so forth. But if I were to walk up to a woman and want to have that conversation with her, that ain't going to fly, right? In almost all cases, she's just going to see me as a friend. She's going to have a nice intellectual conversation, but she's not going to feel turned on, 
Uh, you've got to know how to make women feel turned on when you talk to them. And when you do that, it starts to become part of your natural way of interacting with women that you want to have sex with. So when you're interacting with women that you want to have sex with, being yourself actually becomes being a guy who makes them feel sexually attracted rather than being a guy who just wants to talk about intellectual things and logical things. Sure, you want to talk about that, but if you want to have sex with her, you create sexual attraction first. You make that happen first. You get to a kiss, you get to a date, or you have sex that night, or you have sex on the first date or second date, and then the woman becomes really keen and interested to learn more about who you are deep down. So the old advice of just be yourself is true, but it's missing critical information. What is missing is that, yes, you be yourself, but you need to be the attractive version of who you are and can be, right? And some guys may think, well, look, I'm just not confident at the moment around women that I find attractive, but that's not who they are. That's where they're at right now, and they can change that. Confidence is belief in yourself and your abilities. If you have belief in yourself and your ability to attract women because you know how to do it, then you're a confident guy around women that you find attractive because you do it, you see that they find you attractive, you feel more confident. You do it again, you see that they find you attractive, you feel more confident, right? And then who you are is a guy who is confident around attractive women, is a guy who is attractive to attractive women, is a guy who gets laid with attractive women, is a guy who has options with attractive women, who has a girlfriend who's an attractive woman. You are now that guy, right? So where you're at right now is just where you're at right now, and you can change that. And by the way, it doesn't mean that you actually change who you are deep down as a person. For example, if a woman gets her cleavage out on display, then she is simply displaying something that obviously and easily attracts the opposite sex. Getting her cleavage out to be attractive doesn't change who she is deep down in her soul or her spirit. She is always her, regardless of whether she shows a little bit of cleavage or not. Likewise, if a man is normally quite shy, introverted, or nervous around women that he finds attractive, and he then begins to display confidence and charm around women that he finds attractive, then he is still who he is deep down in his soul or spirit. For example, you might be able to feel that even though you've changed so much over the years as you've grown up to become a man, who you are deep down has always been the same. You can probably feel that when you think about who you were as a kid. You can feel that connection to yourself. You know who you are deep down. Yet, you've actually learned to express yourself in ways that have made women feel a certain way about you. Women that you find attractive are either feeling turned off, feeling neutral, or feeling attracted to you. So, if you're not getting the kind of results that you want with women that you find attractive, because you're too nervous and unsure of yourself around them, then being able to be confident around those women doesn't mean that you're not being yourself anymore. Instead, you're just now being an attractive version of yourself, a more evolved, a more developed version of yourself, a more competent version of yourself, a more effective version of yourself. But who you are deep down is still there. Right? You know who you are deep down, but you're either displaying traits that are attracting women, turning women off, or making them feel neutral towards you. Additionally, when you begin to display attractive traits around women, it doesn't mean that you've then changed who you are in a bad way. Because at the end of the day, everything that women are looking for from you, for example, your confidence, your emotional masculinity, your social intelligence, your charm, and so forth, everything that they're looking to feel sexually attracted to actually turns out to be a benefit for you in life in general. Not only do women find you sexually attractive, but men start to respect you more. People start to like you more. You get promoted so much more easily in the workplace and you feel better about yourself. You're not a guy who feels bitter. You're not a guy who feels left out. You're not a guy who feels annoyed that you can't get the girls that you want. You're a guy who's getting that constant show of interest from women that you find attractive. And that feels good as a man. So be yourself, yes, but if the current presentation of who you are is not making women feel sexually attracted and want you, then you simply need to know what to do to make them feel sexually attracted to you, what behaviors, what 
attitude to display, you start doing that and you will immediately see a completely different response from women, right? If you're confident with an attractive woman versus insecure, she will treat you completely differently, right? She will look at you in a completely different way. And when an attractive woman feels attracted to you because you're feeling truly confident around her, you're not gonna feel like you're fake now that you're confident and that you feel good enough around attractive women. You're gonna feel good about yourself. You're gonna feel proud that you did it. Right? You're going to look at yourself as someone who has leveled up, someone who is now attractive to women, and you know deep down that you deserve that. But if you don't currently know how to make that happen, you need to learn how to do it. You need to improve that. You need to get that figured out. Right? Don't go through life thinking that who you are right now is all you can be.